Okay, let's make a start. Hi everyone uh, and welcome to this 30 minute uh, lunch and learn what makes a great employee experience brought to you by the Centre for Strategic Communication Excellence. My name is Sia Papagiorgio and I'm the Centre's Director. I hope wherever you are right now, you and your loved ones are safe and well. Today, I'm very pleased to welcome Adrian Cropley, CEO of award-winning uh, global consultancy, Cropley Communication, and Joshua Haybetz, Managing Director, Propel, an organization that uses technology to create lasting and positive employee experiences. They've joined us today to discuss what makes a great employee experience, why it's important, and the benefits you can expect from creating one that help your uh, helps your employees thrive. Before we begin, I just wanted to let you know um, that there will be some time at the end to address any questions you may have. So please use the chat function at the bottom of your screen to ask those questions and I'll be keeping an eye on the chat function. And now without further ado, I'll hand over to Adrian. Welcome Adrian. Thank you for that, Sarah, and uh, welcome everyone. And it's great to see so, so many familiar uh, names up on the, uh, uh, the screen. Um, I'm really looking forward to working with, uh, with Josh. Josh and I go back uh, a number of years and, and work together in different organizations. Um, and uh, thank you, Sia, for the lovely introduction. I, start, I wanted to start out with a bit of a quote. Um, and what we're going to do is we'll, we'll set the scene a little bit and we'll be able to talk about some of the, the thinking around uh, employee experience towards the end of this. So the, the quote I pulled from McKinsey Company in a report that they did earlier this year, um, and it really begs the question to what is employee experience, and I think they defined it really quite well. Uh, but there's always been those question marks around whether it's a fad, it's a new buzzword, um, but it's a fresh approach to competing in today's war for talent. I think certainly in organisations. Sometimes we, we find it a fancy way to uh, say the word engagement. But I think it's much more than that. Um, and it might be attractive to millennials, um, certainly in, in that attraction towards employee, um, employers and the experience there. And they really account for 30% of the population, um, or they will do by 2025. Um, so let's think about what, what employee engagement is about. And, and millennials aside, the shift to employee experience as we, refer, as we refer to it as EX, um, is really uh, parallel to a chain, the changing nature of work today. So with today's technology, about 45% of activities people are paid to do could be automated, and about 60% of jobs that have 30% or more of their activity or of their activity can be automated as well, and that's the era that we're moving into. So what does that, that mean to us? So how people show up and interact with companies will differ fundamentally into the future uh, and, and how we recognize employees. And I think there's a, a real, real reimagining of what employee experience is all about. So let's have a look at the impact though for today. Today's world differed from six months ago, quite dramatically. And I'd like to share some insights from Josh, uh, Josh Barron. Um, in an article about employee experience redefined in May this year. And he stated that perhaps the, the, the biggest new trend in human resources is the trend that is now firmly landed due to COVID-19, and that's the trend to ex employee experience. Most companies, I think COVID-19 is all about the digital transformation. Um, and certainly there's that digital focus and we've gone digital on steroids in this last, uh, last six months of the year. But it's more than that. It's actually a big wake up call to employee experience and the merger between employee experience and customer experience. And it's now primary to the focus of most businesses in the world today. So let's consider the issues that we're now facing. So companies are not just grappling with back to the office strategies as being their, their number one topic right at the moment, um, but it's the optional, do we return to the office? And it's all now about workplace and workplace trust. So they're big issues as we start reimagining what employee experience is. And in fact, you know, there's some uh, a sweeping new mandates from the health um, organizations like the Centers for Disease Control and so on, they're now saying it's employees or the expectation on employees is for mandatory and legal safe work environments. So 
if we looked at it from Maslow's hierarchy of needs, we seem to have shifted from the very top where we were focused late 2020, right back down to the basics of what employees are requiring right now. And it's all about um, you know, benefits, salary, security, health and well-being. So it's an interesting landscape that we're just navigating at the moment. I kind of looked at this a, a different way and said, what are the, th the issues we were dealing with post-COVID to what we're dealing with now? And then we think about the, uh, um, the, the pre-COVID activities was very much focused on, uh, on these types of, sort of issues, uh, recognition and leave and uh, uh, you know, work-life balance. Uh, now it's, uh, we're looking at all of these issues around uh, health, safety, um, reporting, infections, controls, um, looking at new sick leave policies, all sorts of issues that we're now grappling with. And I looked at a, a report that was um, done by Deloitte. Um, and of course, we know now that getting back to work is going to happen. But what does that actually look like in terms of what we do? So the report from Deloitte talked about the last 10 years in the evolution of, uh, of employee experience. And in the early decades was really much more around being in the shadow of the recession. So organizations kind of buckled down then and their renewed focus uh, on cost and compliance. Leaders were tasked to drive operational efficiency um, in their teams, in their divisions, and often led to, to a siloed approach within the organizations. Um, and enterprise issues that really focus the leaders in their specific areas of the business and very little crossover and collaboration between departments. We also saw a huge increase in technology as we started to step into social and digital in those, that early decade. The report talks about also the mid decade being the future of work um, arrived. And this was really where technology started to take hold in the, the mid-decade um, and transform our day-to-day -day lives and for, for people right around the world. And it was clearly centered on the work environment. So while the foundations of digital, mobile, uh, cloud and social media were established in the early decade, by the middle of the decade, it shifted towards technology was being viewed as a driver and an enabler of every aspect of our work. What it drove though is information overload. And we, we talked about that quite a lot in the, within the communication realms of what was happening in that middle decade, um, that overload, the 24, uh, 24 seven switched on uh, employee, um, overwhelmed workers. Um, and that actually undermined productivity and contributed to things like low employee engagement. But towards the end of the decade was the arrival of social enterprise. So it became clear that we, there were new aspects to our new organization. And it was often still missing if organizations hope to unlock the power of humans uh, and technology together. So there was this real move towards some of the, the social landscape stuff. If we think about some of the things that were happening in that late part of the, or the mid to late part of the decade, uh, Black Lives Matter actually started back then. Love wins, Brexit, things like uh, the Remain campaign, Me Too, all social issues that people were now in wanting to be part of and felt valued as that, that it connected with their experience and what the beliefs and values of the organization was. So I think we, we completely landed right into that era of the social enterprise. But looking ahead, what does that mean? Um, and I've really put up this, this word of the emotional enterprise. And if we think about that changing landscape, yes, social enterprise is completely front and center and will continue to do that. But with this changing world and, and the effects of COVID and anxiety, mental health, all of the things that are contributing right now to re-engagement with employees in a different way. And so I think it's becoming the age of what we call the emotional enterprise where we're reconnecting um, and providing support to employees and environments where they do feel that safe, secure, um, and loved environment. So 
I looked at um, what Accenture had brought out uh, a couple of years back, actually 2017, when they talked about customer experience. And there's now this merging of customer and employee experience. But what they said then is that, um, that in this digital age where transparency is high and products and services are quickly commoditized, customer experience is often a company's only point of differentiation. So customers have caught on, the demand for personalization, relevant and convenient interactions. So if a company fails to meet those liquid expectations, they simply walk away. So what they want is choice. And what they discovered through the, the, the research is customers are really wanting choice to engage with an organization. And they called it moments of truth and trust being the most important thing to trust in the brand that they have. So with that, what did that mean to employee experience? So leading companies that started to recognize the connection between customer experience and employee experience. About 51% of business leaders surveyed by Accenture are planning to create individualized employee experiences and comparable to customer experiences in the next two years. So they're the equal effort being, uh, being looked at for those. And the lines between professional and personal life are being blurred. So employees increasingly want relevant, convenient and engaging experiences that they can, can have outside and inside of the workplace. So above all, they want an opportunity to shape their workplace experiences on their terms. So it's becoming fast within their hands. If I look at that, that world, so what's, what's the question to, to our, uh, in our communications um, focus? So if we look at this mergence between customer experience and employee experience, I think there's a lovely little spot in the middle that's about people experience. It doesn't matter who they are, uh, employees or customers. And so we've had that traditional focus from sales and marketing versus the focus from human resources and our leadership in providing these experiences. I think there's a real catalyst now where our corporate communication, internal communication is really looking at that spot right in the, the middle here and navigating organizations into these areas of providing the experience to both our customers and our employees. And I think also the focus on people um, and that are looking for those experiences, they're also looking for things like safety, security, trust in the organizations, and even to a large degree healing, um, which I think is really important at this time. And I think companies are now starting to focus on, so what is it that we need to provide, certainly our employees at this time, and our customers in a world that is absolutely changed. So, if I, I look at this, the, uh, there's three things, and it's really, uh, uh, and this again comes from the Accenture report, that if we're looking at experiences, it come, groups into three buckets. There's really about the physical experiences, um, and they're the choices related to workplace environments, because this is what the choice employees want to make. The human experiences, and that's the choices related to interactions with others. Um, and the reason I've used this and given its 2017 data is that this has become even more valid now that we're looking at those human experiences. And again, the, we're, that era of social enterprise, digital experiences are absolutely critical and the choices employees can make around that. I think the, the key that uh, Accenture looked at is that we're trying to create these professional moments that matter and the personal moments that matter. So with that, I'm going to hand over to Josh to talk through a few things with you. Great. Thanks, Adrian. So I kind of came up with this the other day, thinking about this presentation. I never signed up to move widgets. And sometimes this is talking about, you know, that, that busy work, those time consuming things we have to do that they're not what you studied for. They're not what you signed up for in your job. And we really want to focus on enabling people to do their best work because that's going to create the best experience for, um, for our teams. So can you click for me, Adrian? 
So, you know, sometimes when we look at employee experience and then we move on and say employee engagement and going, taking that step across, there's a big thing there about trust. Um, and, you know, it's really about getting people involved in, in our journey, making people part of the process. That's what expected now. It helps build trust. Um, and, you know, it really helps then, you know, as you'll see here from this Edelman Trust Barometer from 2020, you know, the expectation of trust, but also the expectation of being involved is so much higher now than what it, you know, even what it used to be. Um, and that number is continuing to grow. But as part of this, you know, it's a journey. So as we go, can you click for me? Uh, as, we, as we go across here, we're talking, you know, and Adrian's spoken about experience, but the experience there and focusing on the employees helps build trust, which then gets us to our goal of in, what I say is our goal of engagement. Um, and engagement is where we start to then say, now we've increased productivity, we've increased ROI. Um, you know, I've seen research papers that say organisations that focus on experience and focus on engagement have more productive work teams. They have higher, even in consulting organisations, they're actually got higher return on investment and higher return from each individual because they're making them part of the organisation and they're focusing on what do we need to do to enable these people and get the best from these people. So it's a journey we go on here. Can you click for me. So I kind of say there's some foundations within this journey. The first one is know your people. So, you know, this can come from, um, you know, I, I sometimes look at things from a technology perspective, but, you know, this is also coming from a top down, you know, know your people within the organisation, their needs, their drivers, but then also know your people within their systems. What do people need to do their job? They don't need to know, finance doesn't need to know everything that another department's doing. They need to be enabled, enabled within their area, but then use this information. Where are our skills? Where are our interests? Um, how can we use our information about people to then build communities? And we'll touch on that a little bit more. But then building communities um, and communicating within those communities. So we have communities as in, you know, the whole organization's a community. But then these communities can be used to then um, create this engagement to take people on that journey. When I spoke about earlier about making sure people are involved in the change. And if you're going to then try and create a more engaged um, and better employee experience, your people are the best people to do this. Um, take them on that journey, that's going to help build the trust. Create the centres of excellence within the organisation. Moral opportunities for people to be involved. So these online communities, these online portals, they don't have to be strictly business. They don't have to be, they can be social. You know, especially in times in times like this, maybe the social ones are are just as important, if not if not more important. You know, I was working with a place we had a daily stand up. The daily stand up wasn't actually about work, and it was probably one of the best things we implemented at the start of um, at the start of COVID was having that time where people could just connect and feel like they're part of something. Then look for opportunities to automate. Um, Automation is getting rid of that busy work that I'm pushing paper around, I'm doing things that I never signed up for. So many things now, automation isn't about replacing people. Often that's the first thing that comes to mind. People go, oh, we're going to automate this, you know, piece of work or this application or something. No, it's about actually allowing people to get back to their job, allowing people to focus on the higher value work. You know, I even say allowing people to manage the automation and ensure it's doing what it should be doing, but it's definitely not about replacing people. If you haven't mobilised, um, you know, now's the time. We spoke about customer experience before, and if you think about it in your own interaction, if it doesn't happen on your mobile, it's probably not going to happen. Um, even think about when was the last time you ac accessed something like Facebook or Instagram on a PC. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people more and more are doing it there. But I still say grabbing the micro minutes. 
And the micro minutes are those pieces where, um, you know, I'm waiting for public transport or an Uber or a taxi, or I'm waiting for a meeting to start and I can quickly flick and look at something on my phone. Grab and utilize those pockets of time, but allow people to also interact. I've got an idea, I wanna throw it out to the team. They should be able to do it on, um, on their mobile. But then analyze and review as well. So, you know, nothing set and forget. Um, I was reading something a little while ago about an intranet and an intranet they now say is a product. It's not a set and forget. It's a product with a life cycle. And we always say, and what, what's next? What's in intranet version two and version three to keep adapting and changing and supporting people within the organizations. So review and refine, steering committees are a great one for these to make sure you know, people are involved uh, and you're getting a good spread across the organization. So I thought we'd just bring up a couple of interesting ones here around employee experience. Um, onboarding, I think is you know, a, a great one to create that lasting employee experience. You know, I'd say people are never more excited about a role except for maybe you know the five days before starting it that's the that's the most exciting time so we're now starting to see more and more organizations build portals where people can actually start doing things before they start so here is your here is your contract here is your login for our onboarding portal and you can set up you know do all your payroll set up all your super all your other things within that portal. You're not um, having to wait to start, but you can be involved. You can start setting up the one-on-ones with your manager and other people in the team. All of those things can happen before, before your team join the organization. Click for me. And, you know, find the social communities, find the other communities within uh, the organization and building those great and lasting experience. That's what gets people excited, gets people talking about where they're joining straight away. Click for me. And then talking about mobile, doing more around compliance on mobile, communication, messaging, and this is two way with these experiences. It's not just saying, you know, we want to push comms out. We want to get people participating in comms, being able to then be compliant, find their policies and procedures and, and those things, incident reporting, um, but make requests and also ensure the automation is still running. Because this, then when people get to their desk, they can do the work they need to do. And, but coming back, technology is here to complement the human interactions. It's not about replacing them. You know, systems are there for to do the grunt work so people can have better brainstorming sessions better workshops be more focused in what they're doing we're not you know never here to remove and it's and it's interesting that people are getting much more creative about using the technology to have those interactions online it's uh, it's great to see some of the the tools that are available now and people are putting into to use yep and the communications, I think the, the line of communications blurring between my personal communications and my work communications, people are, are jumping and, you know, uh, it's, a, it's a lot more, um, you know, the younger generations will communicate with, with both channels and, and not really even context switch half the time. So we look at this this last bit. We uh, Josh and I thought we would put together some of the quick wins for for people looking at their employee experiences, and we've we've formed it into if if employee experience is the centre here, how can we support it from a technology point of view, and then what does that mean from the practice, the the behaviours? So Josh, have you talked through the technologies, Mel? Yeah. So we've touched on this, but communities, places to share, places to work. So don't think of communities strictly as work, they can be social as well, but create places where people with common interests, common skills can come together. But then have knowledge, have knowledge, publish it, find it, publish it and share it. Um, capture all this knowledge. Personalize your systems as much as possible. So, you know, there's so many ways to do this, but create personalized experiences. So when I go on, you know who I am, you almost know what I'm looking for now. And this, you know, these things are, are quite easy to do, but a lot of this information is already in there, 
but how do we personalize it? How can you see me as somebody logging on to do some work rather than a log on or a login or a user ID? Um, and enable your people. Um, you know, the big thing we see a lot is we've got, you know, great um, systems and things, but enablement is about giving people the tools, but also enabling them to use the tools. And that creates the great experience. You could have the best systems and, and things in the world, but the experience comes from ensuring people know how to use them and can leverage what's there. And if I, if I build on to that area, flexibility in, under that enablement area is really what we're, people are looking for. As we talk about choices and the way that uh, employees want uh, their experiences, we need to have flexibility into how we do that and, and how we enable them. If we look at the communities, it's about from a communication point of view, we've got to stop talking and listen an awful lot more. So listening, if you look at the skills around uh, uh, social interaction, counselling, those types of things are uh, things that we really need to be focused quite heavily on communication wise and also opportunities to collaborate because people want to have that sense of purpose and togetherness. Under that area of knowledge, I think the biggest area of knowledge we need to build is the capacity for emotional intelligence. Right now, more than ever, we need that in our, our leaders and organisations to understand this is about people. And while we talk about people, it's about knowing your people. Um, we call it personalization on steroids right now, is, as with much as we are focused on the external customer about knowing everything about them, we now need to do that with our people within organisations. So just some tips that we wanted to share with you. And I wanted to end up with a bit of a smile from you. And this is a, a, a new job that, a, that I'm doing. Um, or uh, if we look at this whole convergence between customer experience and employee experience, um, and I recently moved into an, uh, a power utility um, or retailer, and I had to define my new job. And I brought uh, human resources, um, communication and customer service into one area. Um, and my new title is Chief Customer and Employee Experience Officer. So I now term myself as the person that's in charge of lots of sex within the organization. So it's the great horizon to look forward to for most communication professionals if you become the uh, in charge of sex for your organization. So with that, sorry, see, that was a dad joke, I know. I'll hand okay. over to your question. <laughs> Thank you, Adrian, and thank you, Joshua. We have one uh, question from Louisa, uh, and that is circling back to what Adrian said about back to the office versus do we return, and with the Maslow needs um, being fundamental at the moment, where's the best place to focus at this time from an employee experience perspective? Is it building up the safety piece or um, emotional needs? You know, wh where is that um, the best place to focus? So I, I think it's a, it's a one-two hit. Um, so if I was to go to the, to the the top piece first, I think it's the emotional needs right now, because we can start working on those while people are still working disjointly from home and other places that they're working. Because what we're finding is right now, employees are starting to have huge anxiety increases. I mean, I don't think there's anybody that's not on this call that has had moments in uh, uh, moments of grief in this last uh, last few months all the employees are feeling that, they will remember us for what that we do for them right now. So we've got to back organizations off on some of those pushy, pushy policies and a bit more of the caring, and then look at then, so what does this mean to long-term within the environment itself? And what does the new way of work look like? Absolutely. Yeah, great. Thanks. Um, okay, so it's just gone 12.31 here in Melbourne, um, so we'll need to wrap up. We are over time. Um, but I just wanted to say thank you very much to Adrian and Joshua for that excellent presentation. Um, and I think, you know, given what you've said, I think the key um, is to develop something that um, is really true to your employees, as you said, um, and on their terms. Um, and align to their, to their organization's culture. So, you know, listening obviously plays a huge role in that. Um, I just wanted to say a very big thank you to everybody for attending today's session. Um, we'll be sure to uh, send you the recording and the slides sometime later today. Um, just uh, if you could just 
quickly go to the next slide, Adrian. Um, I just wanted to mention our, our next webinar is happening next Wednesday, the 19th, at 5 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. Uh, that is uh, our Lifting the Lid series. Um, uh, my special guest is UK-based values and ethics expert, Jane Mitchell. Uh, that is sure to be a fantastic uh, conversation. We're going to be talking about values, purpose, ethical leadership, imposter syndrome, wake-up calls, and lots, lots more. Um, I'll include the link to register for that session in the email I'll be sending you later today. Um, but thank you once again. Thank you to our presenters. Thank you to all of you. Enjoy the rest of your days and please stay safe. Thanks, Thanks everyone. everyone. Please reach out if you need anything. Bye-bye. Thanks. Thanks, bye.